goddamn loves me some Rygar. No, not that one. Nope, not that one either. Yeah, that's the one. Tecmo's 1987 port of Rygar is definitely one of my top 10 favorite NES games. I fracking love this game. But then why am I not giving this game a full review? Because it's terrible, but not terrible like Mystic Quest, like actually awful. It's buggy, it's ugly, it's confusing, it offers almost no direction, has virtually no story in the actual game, has a fuck awful ending, and is one of my favorite games on the system. For me, it's really the absolute essence of nostalgia, even more so than, say, DuckTales. DuckTales is a game I can love for both the fact that it was one of my favorite games as a kid, and because it's really, really good. But Rygar? It's just one of those games. So I dedicate this video to anyone who loves a game, even though deep down you know in your hardest of hearts it is an awful game. Not really a game you could defend, but you don't care. Everyone has a guilty pleasure, and mine is Rygar for the NES. But maybe Rygar isn't that bad. Maybe it's just really old. I mean, for 1987, it has a big, sprawling open world to explore, awesome music, a large variety of items to find, and pretty responsive controls. If you're not an action veteran, it can be really hard sometimes, but you got infinite continues. I think the fact that I know where to go and how to beat Rygar has a lot to do with why I like it. Like I said, this game offers virtually no direction, save for a few cryptic messages from those useless old buff dudes. I remember looking up where to go in one of those How to Win at Nintendo Games books. Anyone else remember those? No? Fuck, I'm old. Anyway, because I'm a nice guy and I want you to enjoy this game, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough to get started. So here we go. This is Rygar. When you start, you can only move to the right, so run to the right. You'll notice enemies will spawn all around you at a pretty high rate, so it's best just to keep moving. Remember, you can jump on enemies which will freeze them and give you a little extra air. When you reach the door, go through it and keep moving. Climb up the rope and you'll see a door. Go inside of it and you'll meet your first useless monk. You'll come across a lot of these guys, and yeah, I don't know what the hell he's talking about either. And don't jump off that ledge, you'll die, which I know is stupid, but just, just don't do it. Alright, keep going, and you'll come down to a new area. You'll travel back to this place a couple times in the game, but never to those last two sections. Keep heading right, and you'll see a door above you. This is our destination. Surprise! New perspective! The bulk of the game is spent here, but we need to get the grappling hook before we can get anywhere important. So head up and hang a left. A really useful tactic is to jump a lot. It makes you pretty much invincible and more agile. At the fork, go right. Keep going and you'll come across a shrine with a tiger's head. You'll see a lot of these in the game. Go inside, which is actually pretty tricky, and get the grappling hook, which you use by hitting up and B. There's nothing else of interest over here, so head back where you came from and now instead head right. Go up and around the ravine, skip those zip lines for now, and hit the first right. Immediately up is another tiger shrine that takes you to the next place we're supposed to go, but we're not going there next. Head right and up if you need to heal, and right once more and you'll see another tiger shrine. Now, we're technically sequence breaking here. We're actually going to one of the last areas in the game. This is totally optional, but it's what I always do. This section can be pretty tough since the enemies are super strong, but if you make it you'll come across a new area. Grapple up from this ledge to find a floating island that has super strong robots. These robots will give you a ton of experience points, but it'll take a really long time to kill at first. If you die, no worries, you have unlimited continues. Develop a pattern and spam these guys for a few minutes. As you get stronger, your HP also increases. The max is 12, by the way. When you're satisfied, you don't have to max out. Head back to here, where you were supposed to go. This place is pretty self-explanatory. Head to the right, and if you're ever in doubt, use your grappling hook. If you took the time to power up, nothing should stand in your way. At one point you'll come to a monk who tells you you cannot pass without the grappling hook. Remember this spot because above him is actually the very end of the game, but of course you can't get there yet. Keep moving and eventually you'll come to a jungle area. Here's a tip, you can refill your health hidden over and up here and you can kill those otter looking things by just scrolling the screen back a bit. And remember, if you're ever in doubt, use your grappling hook. Before long you'll meet the first boss, which if you've powered up is a joke. Collect your reward and we're back here again. Now it's on to the second boss. Head to the left, back to the ravine. Either go up and around or down and across the zip line and go to the bottom left. Then go across the next zip line. It's actually a pain in the ass to connect on there, so be careful not to fall in the water and die. Now follow the path to another door. This is the next area. It's not hard to navigate in there, so explore until you find the spider boss. And don't forget about the power-up and recovery spells on the pause screen. Those white bars represent the energy gathered from stars. 
After that, very carefully walk around the door, then follow the path until you see a log. Stand just right and push B, now walk straight on the line. Again, this game is buggy and unpolished, so try not to accidentally fall off and die. Now you may have also noticed this game has an amazing soundtrack, especially that cave music you just heard. Well, Rygar also has the dubious honor of having one of the most jaw-droppingly, mind-numbing songs ever composed. It is just these four fucking notes. This is the music that plays in Hell's Waiting Room. Navigating this area is about as hard as the boss waiting for you, so I'll leave that to you. And at this point, you're about two-thirds of the way through the game and have enough items to go just about everywhere. I've already told you where the end of the game is, so I'll leave the rest up to you. Before we wrap things up, I have to talk about something. The soundtrack to this game is without a doubt its best part. But don't take my word for it. Music montage! That's enough out of me. Rygar is absolutely one of my favorites. Not so much the other ones, but you should definitely play this game. It's cheap, and now that you know how to get started, you'll probably enjoy this game. Hope you enjoyed getting super nerdy on some Rygar. Thanks for watching.